five years after Frank left, the accumulation of films were still with us and unused when Professor Barnes of the Iowa University and Jim Perkins, both of the Chicago chapter of the Society of Advancement and Management, offered to take all of this film and evaluate it and put it into such shape that we'd have one film. It was a project which interested and had the cooperation of the whole chapter, the Chicago chapter of the Society for the Advancement of Management, but most of the work was done by Jim himself. Frank Bunker Gilbreth was born in 1868 and died in 1924. He took his first step into the field of management in 1885 when on his second day as an apprentice bricklayer, he questioned why he was being taught several different methods for laying bricks. His interest in finding the best method led to his development of motion and fatigue study. Here is his partner, Lillian Moeller Gilbreth, who now is the first lady of management. They worked together as a team after their marriage. Her education in psychology, coupled with her understanding and insight into the fundamental labor management concepts, brought recognition that she was indeed a full-fledged partner in the Gilbert Quest. One side of the large desk in their office was used by Frank and the other by Lillian Gilbert. Motion study was first developed when it was applied to the world's oldest mechanical trade, bricklaying. The traditional method, even after 6,000 years, involved unnecessary stooping, walking, and reaching. Hod carriers still dumped the bricks, damaging them. The bricklayer then made a careful inspection of each brick in order to determine its best side before laying it. A 225-pound man bending to his shoe tops twice for each brick expends much more energy than in moving the four and a half pound brick. He stoops once for the brick, then once again for the mortar. Excessive stooping was the fatiguing and unskilled part of the job and required most of the time. To eliminate waste motion, Gilbert designed a non-stooping scaffolding platform and a one-motion grass packet. When the men worked on the wall, a lifting jack gradually raised the entire scaffold. This device, patented by Gilbert in 1891, maintained the level of mortar and bricks at the most untiring height and close to the wall. By applying the Gilbert system of motion analysis, the motions per brick were reduced from 18 to 5. The number of bricks laid per hour increased from 125 to 350, increasing productivity by nearly 200%. The most tiring part of the job had been the stooping, 250 times per hour. Under the new method, a man could lay more bricks standing normally and in the least tiring position. Please never were able to have all these energy-saving devices used because of opposition on the part of the unions. But they were tried out on some of our own jobs to the point where we knew that they would work. About this time when the horseless buggies overtook the horse and the airplane was still a curiosity, Gilbert wondered about a new challenge. Following his outstanding success in bricklaying and construction, he then pursued broad research in diversified manufacturing operations. Fundamental principles and techniques resulted from this research. He created an entirely new school of thought concerned with how to improve industrial efficiency and at the same time improve working conditions for the worker. His work took a firm hold in engineering and economic societies as well as with the leaders of our country. Its impact upon the economy helped the United States to attain its present position in the world. In a speech made to the nation by President Woodrow Wilson on August 25, 1919, he was quoted as saying, better standards of living are impossible without producing more. Men cannot consume what has not been produced. On American labor rests grave responsibility if labor itself is not to suffer. Gilbert's research, discoveries, and conclusions extended into many diverse areas. Motion and fatigue study, skill study, plant layout and material handling, inventory control, production control, business procedures, 
safety methods, developing occupations for the handicapped, athletic training and skills, military training, and surgical operations. Frank, as of course you know, was, felt that the human element was the most important element in any work situation, that the more you could know and understand the worker, the happier you could probably make him on the job. And as he always felt that happiness minutes were the thing that we were all primarily interested in, why, of course, you got those happiness minutes by trying to make people enjoy their work. On his first consulting job, one of the most important operations at the New England Butt Company was the assembling of its braiding machines. A mechanic working from blueprints assembled 18 braiding machines per day. Using motion picture analysis and the help of the men, a better method was developed. The parts were first laid out in order. Without the use of blueprints, a mechanic assembled 66 braiding machines per day, an increase of over 250%. This packet was one which Frank took a great deal of interest in, which he enjoyed very much indeed. He disassembled and, a, and then put each part in the nearest place, pre-positioning it so it could be brought into its uh, component part of the thing he was assembling in the shortest amount of time possible. He could have these packets set up. This series of pictures demonstrates the packet method. The packets provide a one-motion grasp, which reduces searching, decision-making, and grasping time. It does require a stock boy to load the packets. This was done by moving the packets on trucks right up to the stock bins. The loaded packets were then rolled into the assembly area. The packet itself was designed for the most efficient series of motions. Gilbert accepted an assignment with Lever Brothers in 1920, and here you see the original method used for edging and polishing bars of glycerin soap. The operator used a hand knife to scrape the mold marks from the edges of the soap bars. Later, the operator polishes the soap bars with a cloth. The new method offered the operator an opportunity to sit or stand at will, the least fatiguing way to work. Gilbert felt very strongly about making work easy. He recognized men will allow themselves to become only so tired during the course of a day, and that they then pace themselves. One Gilbert study showed that providing a chair for the worker and allowing him to sit or stand at will improved productivity by 18%, and at the same time, the worker returned home less tired. Gilbert's new method provided for shortened reaching, the use of gravity feed containers, drop delivery for damaged bars to the waste bin and a stool, making the work less tiring and giving more output. This poorly organized operation for packing soap is ineffective because of the excessive handling of wrapping materials, movement of cartons, bands, fillers, tops, boxing, and stacking. While these studies were going on in summer, Frank brought a lot of uh, boxes and soap down to Nantucket. And it's difficult to get around the shoe that summer because the, all the family and neighbors and friends came in to experiment on soap packing. It was something equivalent to our pin board today when everybody wants to participate in it. You will often see people running around or walking around while the photographs are going on, they were all participating sometimes to the advantage and once in a while to the disadvantage of the work going on, but always to the advantage of the morale we felt. Here, as they often did, the Gilberts worked together in order to develop a new method. Mrs. Gilbert told me later that after viewing this method and trying to improve it, she learned that a certain type of work is too complicated for simultaneous motions of both hands and fingers, and that Frank probably said, I think that a fixture for holding and processing one box at a time would be helpful. Here is the new Gilbreth method. It simplified the operation into packing one bar at a time. 
Less space and elimination of much duplicate handling was required, and output increased considerably. Gilbert is quoted as having said that in his experience, one can develop a new motion pattern which reduces manufacturing time by 80% by the use of motion analysis. In this laboratory study, Gilbert found that distance had a little effect on time for motion, but that longer motions were more fatiguing. Some of the time values he obtained were applied in new work patterns. He found these new cycle times were very reliable for skilled workers. Here is an extremely hazardous operation for cutting nuts. The fingers come very close to the cutting wheel and a little slip could cause a very serious accident. In order to obviate this danger, Gilbert designed a safety holder and a more economical motion pattern, but the greatest advantage was the safety feature. You see here that the new method and safety fixture keep the fingers away from the danger circular cutting blade. Here is a root model which Gilbert developed to improve the flow of materials. He said when he first developed this technique, some of his friends laughed themselves to death, but that it was quickly accepted by plant managers. It includes an analysis system with summarized statistics to help evaluate different layouts. Gilbert found that the layout distance was often cut by 75% and process time was reduced considerably. Here we have the development of a new method for packing boxes of Lux soap by use of a conveyor. Shortened reach helps increase productivity, and less lifting makes the work less tiring. Gilbert favored the use of conveyor operations particularly because it helped save time and relieve people of the necessity for moving heavy loads. He noted, however, that sometimes a conveyor operation with a gang of workers allows too much idle time required to keep the system going, and this was one of the comments he made about one of the early Ford assembly lines. This is one of the Taylor experiments which Frank uh, made over again uh, in order to compare the results with the results as they're in shop management. This film is very amusing because the rate in which it was taken, it shows, uh, as did many of our own experiments, the, that's Frank over the left here, how uh, rapidly people under load would go up the, as you remember in the film, in the book, in shop management, Taylor advocated that they work and then rest exactly according to the plan which he had worked out. Gilbreth had a profound respect for Taylor's work. By using rest periods in an incentive system, Taylor was able to increase productivity from 12 and a half to 47 tons per day per man. This increase raised a man's wages from $1.15 to $1.85 per day. Gilbreth agreed with Taylor's findings. Gilbreth's simul motion chart showed that men took very consistent steps except where there was a depression at the bottom of the ramp. Later, when Gilbert was a major in the Army, he found that some of the men tried to evade the service by limping purposely. However, he remembered his earlier study and found he could identify fake limping. One man even conceived the idea of wearing one small and tight shoe to feign a limp, but Gilbert caught it. Gilbert's investigations also extended to business procedures such as maintaining stock, counting out and issuing stock, maintaining records, low inventory ordering points, and so forth. The ordering point was based upon the length of time it took to replenish stock. The bins were designed to facilitate both the replenishment and removal of stock. Here you see a special scale which is called the weighing counter. It was used for weighing out parts instead of counting the proper number of parts. By means of a ratio on the scale, a predetermined number of parts would be indicated when it was in balance. When only a few parts were required, they were counted, put into a tote box, and delivered to a pickup station for the stock delivery man.
We all recognize this as being an early development of the lift truck for moving skids. Gilbreth called it a booster truck. It was in the process of being developed in the early 1900s. This booster truck was also used for moving work tables and equipment nearer to the particular operation. Note that at that time the feet, or fins as Gilbreth called them, were not attached to the platform. That came as a later development. Booster trucks lifted skids to table level in order to reduce the amount of fatigue and improve productivity. This is a fairly common practice today by paper cutters in the printing industry. Keeping office records was important and many studies were made regarding efficiency and maintaining business records of office systems which involved posting, the use of comptometers, and typewriters. A great deal of controversy existed at that time concerning employment of women in manufacturing operations. Gilbert's psychograph technique to learn about skill was one of his most significant contributions. He gives a demonstration here by attaching flashing lights to his fingers, which indicates the length of time a motion takes. He said that the psychograph made a greater contribution in analyzing motion than the use of moving pictures. He developed three-dimensional motion models from the pictures he made. Now we're coming very shortly into some of the application of the psychograph uh, out in the actual shop work. This was done also in the New England Butt Company. Some of these uh, studies that you see are to uh, show skill and the difference between a skilled operator and unskilled operator. And some of them are to show the learning process. Here you see a psychograph study applied to a drilling operation. By tilting the tote box so that the parts all slid down to a certain place in the box, the operator could reduce searching and grasping time. It was found that the old theory of feeding parts into one side and out the other did not work as well as when the part is fed in and after drilling, the latch handle is allowed to drop down a chute into another tote box. The new method increased productivity over 100% and was less fatiguing. In an application of this psychograph technique to one operation, more than a mile of hand travel was eliminated. Gilbert said, the expert uses the motion model for learning the existing motion path and the possible lines for improvement. He also said, an efficient and skillful motion has smoothness, grace, strong marks of habit, decision, lack of hesitation, and is not fatiguing. In the early days of the typewriter, promotion was based upon winning the annual national typing contest. After losing one year, the Remington Company commissioned Gilbert to train a champion typist. He applied his motion study techniques. His champion for the Remington Company used a system emphasizing the eyes were to stay focused on the material to be typed. The champion typing record, set in 1916, was 150 words per minute from strange copy and with no mistakes. One of the fields in which he took special interest was the visual process. He studied effects of lighting, lighting conditions, and the use of eyes in industry from the point of view of improving efficiency, and largely as a means of reducing visual fatigue. The series of shots you see here were probably made only to determine whether the camera could be used to demonstrate and measure eye movements. Gilbert studied work distribution in order to balance the load of the fingers based upon their muscle capacities. Ultimately, a new Dvorak keyboard was engineered, which is said to have improved output from 7 to 15 percent. The Giants versus the Phillies at the Polo Grounds on May 31, 1913. Gilbert found that the pitch ball traveled at the rate of about 150 miles an hour. It was in flight about three-tenths of a second, which allows very little reaction and swinging time. The cross-section screen used was to learn where does the ball start to curve and how much. Gilbert found that after the ball left the pitcher's hand, it took about one and a half seconds for it to be relayed to second base. The dash to steal second base with an eight-foot lead required a speed faster than the world's record for the 100-yard dash.
Gilbert believes skills in one field could be transferred to another. His first assignment as major in World War I was to teach soldiers how to throw hand grenades. His knowledge of pitching skills stood him in good stead in his military assignment. Major Gilbreth made many Army training films. One assignment was to train soldiers how to unjam the Browning automatic machine gun. He applied his motion study principles to develop the fastest method. His training included dismantling a jammed gun and reassembling it blindfolded to assimilate the work required during night action. Gilbert felt it was every man's patriotic duty to look after the unfortunate, particularly the war casualties. His film study showed him that most people really only use one hand to work and said it was not too difficult to make minor alterations in the equipment to suit the handicap. Gilbert's interest in helping to develop occupations for the handicap went back to the early 1900s. Motion study was the tool he used to devise specific methods so that the handicap could work and compete in industry. Here are two of the arrangements which were made to adapt typewriters. He felt that earning a living was no more important than self-respect and happiness. as a boy and witnessed several hundred surgical operations. In 1910, he started intensive studies in hospitals in the United States, Canada, and Germany, including work at the Mayo Clinic. He observed that doctors took more time looking for their instruments than they did in performing the operation itself. Working with the doctors, he came up with a technique which is still being used today. When the doctor was ready for a new instrument, he extended his open hand, palm up, to the nurse and called for the instrument he wanted. He was thus able to keep his eyes focused upon the open incision and therefore reduce operating time significantly. Gilbert said that at first the doctors were a little hesitant, but that as they realized how he could help them, they became most cooperative. Here you see the doctors and nurses prepare a patient whose stomach is being painted with iodine for the removal of a large tumor, which you will see later. In addition to critical surgery, Gilbreth also studied various medical and hospital skills. He found that doctors, nurses, and technicians seldom used the same methods. He established the best methods for tying sutures, making hospital beds, and so forth. The AMA recognizes these moving picture films of Gilbreth as being the first movies of surgical operations. His work, of course, was really a method study rather than from the medical aspect of how the operation must be performed. We had marvelous cooperation. I feel sure uh, that this was because Frank took plenty of time to enlist the real interest of the people concerned, and also that he had such tremendous enthusiasm that uh, spread to other people. The days just weren't long enough to fit in all the things that he wanted to. And in case you're concerned, this operation was successful. Cheaper by the Dozen tells the story of the Gilbreth family and how the home was managed. This family is loved internationally, so a few scenes of their family life may not be out of order. This picture I have had tried to have eliminated from the film a good many times, but haven't succeeded. The children, strangely enough, who photographs are not very flattering, all love it and wouldn't have it come out of the film for anything. The Gilbert said that the home is a restaurant, a dormitory, a school, a hospital, a place for development and relaxation, and most of all, a place for love. Mr. Gilbert said that the home is a plant whose product is Happiness Minutes.